Hey guys, Ivan here. So this video we're gonna start with a good Vito physique update. So Arnold Classic, Boston Pro, those shows are over, and I'm looking at this guy and I'm thinking, what the hell is he waiting for? I mean, look at this freaking mass monster, this freak of nature right here. All those guys that are doing the Arnold Classic and Boston Pro are very genetically blessed, but how many of them do have these kind of freaky genetics? Not many, really. And if you consider that this guy is, I think, 25, 26, can you imagine what a... Look at this guy. Look at this freaking Hulk right here. Can you imagine how big he will be, how freaky he will look in, like, five years from now? I'm guessing he's very well paid over there in European IBB, and that's why he's staying there. I think, I mean, I hope someday when he's good enough, he's going to transition to the IBB Pro League as soon as he can't win any more shows and he is completely undeniable in European IBB, he will move to the MPC, to the America and compete against the real pros, win a real pro card because that's what it is. I mean, the Mr. Olympia and the IBB Pro League, that's the pinnacle of bodybuilding. That's where the best bodybuilders are at. Doesn't he remind you of a young Jay Cutler, just bigger, even wider than him, with a smaller waist? He's having some issues with the uh, back symmetry, but the back is big and wide and the, the waist is very small and the legs from behind are looking insane. So again, if this guy transitions to the IFBB Pro League eventually, he's gonna be a dangerous player. What do you guys think? What is his maximum potential in IFBB Pro League, uh, the Mr. Olympia level, let's say? He's good, but he needs to work a lot more to get to this level. This is Brandon Curry after the Arnold Classic. If you guys followed my channel, you know that I think William Bonek should have won the Arnold Classic. And Brandon, he got a gift, basically. That win was a gift. Look, he looks amazing. He does not look bad, but William just looked much better. And William said that he's going to fix his uh, problems, the reasons why he lost. You know, the stomach issue and the gyno issue. If he does that, can he beat Brandon at Mr. Olympia? Well, here's what I think. I think Brandon didn't really expect Bonek to bring what he brought. I don't think anybody did. So that's why Brandon didn't really come as sharp as he could. I think he played it, you know, safe. He didn't want to push the conditioning too much for the Arnold because he thought he's gonna win it easily. And he thought right, you know, he almost lost to Monek, but not really. I mean, the scorecard showed that Brandon won pretty decisively. So he didn't really exhort himself too much. And I'm expecting him to look much better at the Mr. Olympia than he did at the Arnold. And he needs to. He needs to look much better if he wants to beat Bonak, who actually had a guy in surgery, and if he wants to surpass Big Ramy, who is winning two years in a row. Now, he does look amazing. I mean, you look at this video and you go, wow, he looks absolutely impressive. But again, on the stage, he needs to be a little bit sharper, and I'm sure he will be. As far as the development, you know, the legs could be bigger. But it really looked like he improved them a little. He just needed to be shredded to actually show what he improved on. And until the Mr. Olympia, he has a little bit more time to actually make them bigger and then to come really conditioned and to actually present his physique in the best light possible. Can he beat Big Ramy? I don't know. What he should worry about is beating Bonak again because Bonak is back. Alright, next I wanted to mention this photo real quick. I don't want to talk too long about it. It was posted by Phil Heath and Steve Weinberger also posted it. That doesn't really matter, what matters here is uh, Phil Heath's arm. <laughs> That's what I wanted to talk about. When I saw this photo, when I saw a size of Phil Heath, I was like, wow. Now, uh, yeah, of course, I'm a bodybuilder and the first thing I looked at was Phil's arms. But then I looked at the other guys and his face. Uh, as well, and I noticed that these guys look kind of younger than they look right now. Could this be an older photo? But why would they post it? I mean, they, they both posted it and they said a great memory from Boston Pro. If you guys know if this photo is new or recent, tell me in the comment section down below. But if it, if it is recent, then I mean, it, it's first of all, it's nice to see Jay Cutler and Phil Heath in the same photo after that beef that they had. If you don't know which beef I'm talking about, go on my channel and type uh, 
Jay Cutler vs. Phil Heath, I'm not sure what the video is called, it's about these two guys and their beef. Uh, anyways, Phil right here looks really freaking massive. <laughs> and if that photo is by any chance old, this one is not. And Phil also looks pretty jacked here. Though in this one he has the angle and that's why he looks so big. Uh, I don't want to talk about this for too long, I just wanted to say that he looks freaking massive. And I have no idea what his plans are, but my personal opinion is, if he was actually retired, he wouldn't be this big right now, no. What about Patrick Moore? <laughs> Did he retire yet? No, as far as we know he didn't. He posted this photo, looking probably worse than before, I don't think he's making any progress. He is staying the same, at best, if that. The caption is just another generic motivational quote, as usual, and there isn't really much to say. I mean, this guy was a rising star. He was top 10 at the Mr. Olympia in 2019. We all thought he's the next big thing, he is the next Ronnie Coleman. He has the aesthetics, he has the symmetry, he has the muscle, everything. And what happened with Patrick Moore eventually? Nothing. Every show after that 2019 Mr. Olympia were failures for him. And this is him right now, this is what he looks like. Nothing impressive, really, not bad either. What are his plans? I don't know, but unless he puts on some serious tissue, he's not gonna do much in the future. John De La Rosa is back, this is him right now. I thought this guy is gonna retire actually, but no, apparently he, he won't. This is him right now and uh, he looks pretty good. No, not as good as he looked when he was competing. His last show, I believe, was 2020 New York Pro where he took third. Uh, Ian Wallier won that show and the year before he won the New York Pro, I think, uh, and he beat Ian Wallier. So in case you guys forgot him, uh, this guy was a top pro until recently and then he just vanished. We didn't know what was going on in his life, he didn't post uh, any physique updates. But finally we got one and uh, he's back, he says. So in terms of muscle mass, he didn't really lose anything during this time. He doesn't really have that fullness and that hardness that he usually does. But I don't know what he was doing, maybe he was like on TRT just maintaining, you know, health phase. And now he's gonna push and do a prep and compete at a, at a show. Uh, he didn't specify if he's gonna be competing, is he gonna be doing shows, but he says that he's back. So this is John De La Rosa right now in 2022. And here is Nick Walker right now in his off season. So right now his weight is 294 to 296 and he's holding that weight for a while now. So it means that he, he definitely grew. I mean, he doesn't look as impressive as he looked during that rebound post, uh, post Olympia. You know, that happens after a while. For the first couple of months after the show, you just look, you know, fill up, your glycogen is full and your body fat is still very, very low. But after a while, you gain some fat and you don't really look that hard. You don't look that impressive, that big as you look post-show. You never look that good, really. But that's normal. I hope he knows that. And also, I think he got a little bit uh, smoother than I expected. And I think it was because he went off everything. I mean, not literally everything, he was probably on TRT, maybe a little GH, I don't know. But here he says that his goal is to stay at this weight and get tighter. So he probably doesn't like very much this smooth off-season look, but that's normal. That's how off-seasons should be like. I mean, you add some body fat, you add some subcutaneous water, and, and you grow. And, uh, you know, I'm sure he knows that. But he probably doesn't enjoy it, he doesn't like it, and he doesn't want to go down in weight. He likes being around 300 pounds, so he doesn't want to go down and he doesn't want to go up. Yeah, that would be too much. For a guy of his height, he's 5 foot 6, <laughs> and at that height, yeah, 300 pounds is, is a lot, and he's about that weight right now, so he probably doesn't want to grow anymore. He just wants to remain this big and just get harder and tighter, which is, I think, a great idea. He is already qualified for the Mr. Olympia. He just needs to cruise and, you know, then blast before the show and peak 
properly just for one show like he did last year at the Arnold which I think was his absolute best ever much better than the Mr. Olympia if he showed up like this at the Mr. Olympia he potentially could have beaten Hunter Labrada probably not Hardy but at least he could have been fourth anyways with more improvements and if he picks right like like he did here for the Mr. Olympia 2022 he's gonna do some serious damage can he win the whole show I don't know about that, but can he uh, move up? I think so. I think he can. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. All the best and bye-bye.